You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Oh yeah, and I am riding on a mystery ship. Holy crap, and it's almost like the mystery machine from scooby dooby doo but not. Because <laughs> this one is, is navigated and piloted and, and fueled sometimes, depending on what I had to eat. <laughs> It's fueled, yeah, by, uh, yeah, a crazy person that absolutely loves to talk (laughs) and give you all a bunch of crap. And, uh, yeah, I'm having a good time. Ooh, dumplings? Dumplings. Mmm, I love dumplings. Okay, I'm I'm looking in the RLM chat, but first I got to say hey to everybody. Thank you, Grimmy, over here on this FN site, Freedoms Network, for um, sharing me out there. And Grim installed a share button over here on freedoms network booyah miri b was over here as well and looky there so td sanders and bob renner and it looks like katie troxel was also sharing some stuff on here as well um let's see over here on fakey book uh the lovely miri b chimed in over here hey miri b how you doing i also see weeda is playing along and uh, i gotta read this this is from a friend of mine marlon um he wrote this on his timeline i'm surprised it hasn't been deleted but we'll enjoy it while we can i'm astonished at how many people believe the vatican to be this superpower dc is the crown's superpower the vatican is nothing but the their luciferian prostitute the mother of all daughters of denominational harlot churches who still carry their mother's traditions, idolatry, and other blasphemies. The Rothschilds used Napoleon to remove the Pope in 1798 so that they could take over the Vatican. And the Rothschilds crown coup, or crown corp, took over the finances and wealth of the Vatican in 1823. Since then, the Vatican is used as the spiritual center of the world, or of the world order of the Jew, Jewy, 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 them Jewy bastards. Damn it all. I wonder if that's anything like uh, Flash or Rooney. <laughs> no, because he's a Mexican Jew. So, from L.A. Go figure. He's a weird combination. And over here on Twitter, I have lost a couple of stalkers. Either I turned corners really, really fast, or I off-ended someone. Huh, imagine that. Me off-ending someone. Oh, darn. I feel so bad. (laughs) Can you tell? Oh, well. Um, I had to retweet something here from um, George Small... uh, (laughs) Shizmuli, <laughs> whatever. It's got entirely too many con- consonants together, so I'm going to have a hell of a time with it. He's a PhD and a senior research fellow and global policy at the Global Policy Institute and author of Bombs for Peace, NATO's Humanitarian War on Yugoslavia. Well, George, cool. Okay, but what George had to say was if... The real Donald Trump were to announce that he's launching a full-scale bombing attack on Syria. Those who are so outraged by the shithole comment would be clapping their hands with glee. It's okay to turn countries into shitholes. It's just not okay to describe our handiwork as such. Obviously, George nailed it there. (laughs) Oh, the hypocrisy. You know, you can't say ode to humanity anymore because it's so much ode to hypocrisy. Why manatees got kicked out of the way so hippos could jump in, I don't know. I think that's speciest, if you ask me. But then again, not too many people ask me because I give them a snarky response. 
<laughs> Wade is carrying on one hell of an argument over here as well on Twitter. And I'm kind of enjoying just watching it. But, um, hey, Grimmy Barman tweeted me out over here on Twitter multiple times. Thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I truly do appreciate it. And I do believe I saw JJ's was over here a little while ago as well. That Scottish feller. I just love JJ's. I love listening to him, actually. He's got a wonderful accent, and it just it just makes me almost twitter paid it. <laughs> As in, not, not Twitter, but twitter paid it. It's a completely different thing. Okay, over here on Minds. Let's see, I did have one person that... Um, Chemtrails MN voted up my little post to let people know that I was going to be on this evening. Other than that, it looks like there's lots of stuff being posted over here on Minds and lots of angry people shouting and yeah, it's like, really? Why are you so angry? If somebody's making you that angry, just, you know, kind of leave them a little present, like blow them an intestinal kiss or something like that. That always hits them right where <laughs> it needs to. Yeah, be a stinker. It's okay. Okay, uh, da -da. I did not log in to Crush and Run. Shame on me. Shame on me. And now, to get over to, which by the way, <laughs> in case I didn't tell anybody, I know I didn't, you're listening to Grammy Mary on reallibertymedia.com, <laughs> also on the RLM Spreaker channel. Um, it's under World Truth Spe Spreaker channel, but yeah, we're, uh, we're live. We're playing. We're being goofy. It's okay. And uh, if you're listening in over on Spreaker and you wish to chat with me, come on over to the RLM chat because, uh, like I said the other day, I have crappy, crappy internet, so I try not to open too many different things at once. And um, that way I don't, you know, lose my stream, lose my flow, whatever you want to call it, which, by the way, I'm just going to go ahead and close Twitter because it's making me cranky but come on over to the rlm there's all kind of fun stuff over here in the rlm <laughs> that's right rob works it is a rocket chair powered mystery ship <laughs> uh-oh aiden quit damn it okay it is dangerous but oh really oh See, and I haven't really, I don't see a whole hell of a lot of their stuff, Grim. So, he just, they they liked something that I did. And it's like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. I, I really don't care for a lot of people's politics. But I'll keep an eye on them just for the simple fact that, you know, they do occasionally say something worthwhile. You know, just like I keep seeing all of these um, quotes from Mother Teresa. And although she was not a saintly person by any stretch of the imagination she did do a very good job of um, you know showing how that broken clock can be correct twice a day she was good at that you know every once in a while she could say something that was very profound um, very helpful she just didn't live what she said at least from what I understand. I did not know the woman personally, and quite frankly, I'm glad. <clears throat> but, in any case, yes, she can't defend herself now. Now she's supposedly a saint up in heaven, and it's like, really? Really? Oh, well, whatever. No, I don't want to sign up to your newsletter. Ah, back to RLM, saying hey, hi, and ho. Over here in the RLM, right up top, is Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Grimner and the lovely Moose Girl, who will be on later on this evening for the Freaker's Ball, so be sure to come check that out, because that's always a good time had by all. I also see the lovely Kate is here from down in the great state of Florida. Duh. And by the way, just to let you know, I may possibly have some weird sound effects. They are not coming from me. My critters are all inside because it's freaking cold outside. So if you hear doggy singing, that's what I'm going to call it. It's probably either Snuffles or Bubba. Pay no attention to it or you can pay attention to it. It's okay, however you wish to look at it. Okay, back to that was your public service announcement. <laughs> 
Hi, Asmo. I see Asmo is here, as well as the lovely Beth Z. I also see BTC Bob is in the house. And Chalcedony. The lovely Chloe is here. Hey, Chloe. I'm here, as well as Java Doctor 2 and JJ's 99, as well as Juana Taco. Gosh, I can't. Once again, I still don't have hamburger thought out, but that does sound yummy. I also see the lovely rain is in the house, and we didn't get any rain the other day. We just got snow and ice and freaking burr, and it's still freaking burr. Go, go figure, it's winter. I also see RLM Fluke, who is the Vanna White of the RLM channel, as well as Rob Works, who thankfully fired up the bubbler. Thank you ever so much, Rob Works. I truly do appreciate it. Um, Even if it's just a contact high kind of thing. Oh, Goober! I see Goober joined. Okay, uh, Colfax 101 is logged in, but is away right now. I also see Dakota and Dimma. Lots of uhs going on. Frumpy's here. Frumpy, Frumpy, Frumpy. That's a fun one to say, too. Gooberzilla just logged in. And looky there, there's Kozu and Moy, 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 which is another fun one to wing, wing, wing. Poxified is logged in, as well as Pompo Pon Sauce, but they are both marked away. Slim Jim Flim is here. Hey there, Slim Jim. And the cuddly one, Teddy, is logged in, as well as the creator of my intro, Phantom 2. Thank you, Phantom, for that. I really do in, um, enjoy that. Now it's time to get over here and start looking at some things that are going to give me lots of snark fuel, like from townhall.com. Now, I heard about this uh, when it was going on, but, you know, there was there was so much, oh, you're just being mean, you know, you big old meanie head poo-poo kind of stuff. But uh, New York lawmaker charged with pocketing Hurricane Sandy money for lingerie. Ooh, I hope you went to Victoria's Secret. Apparently, a New York state lawmaker, Pamela Harris, ha, huh, go shock, has a D there for demon crap, has been charged with pocketing tens of thousands of dollars that was intended to be used for Hurricane Sandy recovery. Now, tens of thousands really isn't that much when you look at the uh, pocketing that went on in the Clinton Foundation, where good old Chelsea got a wonderful wedding out of the deal. Sorry, people in Haiti. You just really didn't need it as bad as Chelsea did. She needed that 10 mil to really put on a show, don't you know? But, so what did she do with that money? Well, she did a lot. Of, oh, she did. She went to Victoria's Secrets. A 57-year-old lawmaker, first elected in 2015, is accused of fraudulently accepting $25,000 from the Federal Emergency Management Agency and failing to disclose it during her recent bankruptcy proceedings. Ah, <laughs> why am I not shocked? She also is accused of keeping 23000 in New York City money meant for Coney Island Generation Gap, a nonprofit she once led. <laughs> Oops. Well, you know, Victoria's Secrets ain't cheap. And directing two people to lie to the FBI investigators when they were interviewed in her case. Naughty, naughty, naughty. She spent the money on household expenses, her mortgage at stores like Victoria's Secrets, and on airfare and cruise tickets. Well, you know, if you're going to go, go big. So you have memories. <laughs> Federal prosecutors also charged her with lying about a need for temporary housing assistance, claiming that the storm forced her out of her Bur Brooklyn home and convincing FEMA to give her 25000 to cover the cost of moving. Sandy devastated New York City in December of 2012, oh, three years prior to her being elected. Go figure! Over 100 people died from the storm, 44 of whom died in New York, and most of the deaths occurred from drowning. Storm's aftermath left flooding, explosion, fires, millions without power, and um, apparently this author drove through Long Island a week or two after the hurricane hit and was shocked to see the debris piles on every street. Yeah, 
Hurricanes leave a mess. They really do. But, you know, that's what happens. Kind of like XYs. <coughs> so I've been told. I didn't do that. But I'm one of the nicer ones. Yeah, you go ahead and believe that. Trust me. <laughs> really. Thank you, Courtney, for this lovely little article over here on townhall.com. Now, basically, I just, uh, when I was playing over on Twitter, I kind of sort of went to um, uh, anything, any headline that grabbed my attention, that's the one I grabbed. So, y'all are going to have fun with my short attention span this evening. <sighs> oh, Victoria's Secrets. You know, I've actually walked into a Victoria's Secrets once, and I wandered around, and I looked at all of the fancy frou-frou finery and all that other fun stuff. And, and you know, you want to see how comfortable this stuff possibly is going to be if you're going to put it on. And so I felt some of the lacy stuff and I thought, this shit's itchy. <laughs> My ex wanted to buy me some of it and I said, I don't want it. Number one, did you see the price tag? Number two, that shit's itchy. No way. And he said, well, you're not going to have it on long. And I said, well, then why in the hell are you going to buy the damn shit? I mean, it does. See, that's me. I just. And then, shocker of shockers, I was telling my mother about it later. And she said, well, you know what the definition of lingerie is, don't you? Or negligee. And I said, no, mother, but I'm afraid to ask. And she said, it's uh, something to put on the nightstand in case of fire. No. No. <laughs> no. Don't think so. Oy. <laughs> to hear that out of my mother was like, oh my God. I really don't want to have that thought in my head, Mom, but okay. <laughs> it's there now. You know, it's like that, um, what was that? Um earlier today frumpy i forget what it was called but i swiped some of flasher's because mind wipe yeah i had flasher had mind wipe burning a hole in his pocket and uh, apparently frumpy and i were the ones that needed it we had the session shutter going on <laughs> almost as bad as the trumple tremble Ugh. nastiness i don't even want to think about what it would be like Ugh. don't go there grams okay from the mad, 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 mad world news dot com. This is another one I saw over on Twitter. Just feeding you the tweets. Um, no, okay, there's a few adjectives here. Um, or descriptives, maybe that's a better one. African migrant pervert gropes teen girl and immediately regrets it when she turns around. Now, see, I was thinking, because I saw that headline and then... I did a quick flashback to Roger Rabbit and remember seeing the the bodacious babe cartoon figure in the window, silhouetted in the window, and then she turns around and it's like, hey. well, see, that's where my mind went. So I thought, oh, let's go check this out. <laughs> well, I don't know, but let's find out if that if that's the case. Apparently, when an African migrant spotted a teen girl at a festival, he assumed that she'd be perfect, helpless target for his perverted groping spree. However, just as he began sexually assaulting the girl, he quickly regretted his decision when his victim turned around. Really? As Europe continues to welcome in millions of migrants, nearly all of whom are Muslim men, the once progressive beacons of progress and civility are sealing their fate, flooding their lands with determined migrants who despise Western cultures, freedoms, and values. Yes, they despise us for our freedom and our values. Oh yes, we have such wonderful values. It's okay to turn a country into a shithole, just don't call it that. Hmm. In any case, back to this. <clears throat> Europeans are walking up to the real or waking up to the reality that these huddled masses didn't come to integrate or even coexist, but to conquer. You know that pretty much uh, that's part of invasion. 
you know, when people invade your space, that it's the same principle, only can be uglier. So while Europeans are struggling to maintain basic aspects of their Western lifestyles, military age migrants are roaming the streets, leaving behind copious amounts of waste, destruction, and unfortunate victims. Luckily, there are still a few bold Europeans who refuse to cower before the armies of migrant thugs, perpetuating their foreign culture's barbaric practices, unlike our homegrown barbaric practices. Yeah, right. Sorry you guys can't see the eye roll going on here. During the 2016 um, Tros Trostock Festival and Skeleftia, I know I said that wrong. Cirque's going to laugh her ass off listening to this. A teen girl and her friend had gathered at a stage in anticipation of the scheduled performers. While enjoying the festivities, the girl suddenly felt one hand pawing her on the buttock and another groping her chest from behind. Oh, I'm thinking foot meat balls. You know, like, just bring it up. I hope she had stilettos on. Mmm. Understandably, the girl was outraged to discover that she would be yet another victim of Sweden's skyrocketing rape epidemic. However... She instantly made up her mind that she wasn't going to be the only one forced to live with the pain of such a heinous assault. According to Freya Titter, a 17-year-old girl known only as Lisa immediately grabbed the hand that had groped her before turning around and, pu and punched the uh, migrant predator who claims to be 18. Expectedly, the migrant was shocked to encounter a vulnerable young girl who would fight back. He quickly cowered, attempting to blame his friend for the sexual assault. Still clinging tightly to the, <clears throat> I use this term loosely, gentleman's hand, Lisa then rhetorically asked, What are you doing? Is this not your hand? It was then that the migrant pervert knew he had been caught in the act and that his intended victim wasn't so helpless after all. Yes, I see you flashing. Oh, I know, Moosey. All men do this shit. Sweetheart, I know that only too well because I have had to deal with that a couple of times. And um, actually, there was one time... Uh, at, not at band camp, unfortunately. It was at a concert at a place called, um, let's see, Custer Island, south of my hometown. And uh, someone decided to get a little bit frisky with me. And although the strap on my dress got torn, my shoe also got broke because I ripped my shoe off and whopped him upside the head. Needless to say, I didn't have any more trouble from him. But I did walk weird for a while because, you know, it's kind of hard to walk with a broken shoe. So, yeah, it's not just Muslim men that do that. Not at all. In any case, back to this. So, <clears throat> after delivering a powerful blow to the migrant offender's face, Lisa called out to nearby security officers who hastily detained the groper. At first, the migrant denied even touching Lisa, claiming that his companion had been the real culprit. Eventually, he had to admit to trying to kiss Lisa before um, ultimately confessing to groping her multiple times in a full-blown sexual assault. Now, on March 15th of 2017, the district court convicted him of sexual assault, sent sentencing him to pay what works out to be $369 in fines and $5,000 in damages to Lisa. Most like, or like most migrants, uh, he wasted taxpayer money by filing an expensive and time-consuming appeal with the High Court in Upper Norland. And on November 15th, the court once again ruled that the sentence was fair. Of course, the African migrant wasn't about to submit to Western justice. Shortly after, he filed yet another taxpayer-funded claim, brazenly demanding 
uh, compensation for his suspension because he had to use his car to travel back and forth between two towns, apparently, for court appearances, which is just under two hours each way. Fortunately, the court came to its senses, denying his claim on the grounds that he was found guilty. Thanks to decades of the left's open borders, such is the fate of Sweden. If this once thriving tourist nation doesn't financially collapse due to the inconceivable number of perpetually unemployed migrants living on welfare and wasting taxpayer dollars with frivolous lawsuits and appeals, they will soon be outnumbered and overpowered by those who demand Sharia law over Swedish law, which, excuse me, I don't think so. But, you know, it's Sweden, so, eh. That's that's there, and we got our own shit to deal with. It does go on and on and on and on and on, but I'm just going to quit right there and, yeah, share this link. And, yeah, he is really, really lucky that she didn't uh, do a foot meets balls kind of thing. Oh, well. Dun, dun, dun. Oh. Yes. Yes, Moosey, it was obviously focusing on the migrant Muslim worker. But, you know, it's funny how um, every article that you read, whoever writes it, their, their um, personal beliefs if you will, always play into it. They always kind of show where they're leaning. And you know what? I see this because I do it myself, so I know how to recognize it. <laughs> but yeah, this young man definitely needed to be punched more than just in the face. I'm thinking there are some dangly bits that would have been punched as well if I'd have had any say about that. But that's just me. So, hmm, and people that seem to think that they can just, oh, shit, shit, and then I went and hit cancel instead of post. <laughs> what? Damn it. There. Now go ahead, do your thing. There. There. See, if I push the right button... It works a whole hell of a lot better. <laughs> I do have a button pushing issue. Go figure. Okay. So, now that I've gotten those two out of the way, let's have fun with some lawmakers, shall we? Because, you know, those people that make those laws, you know, the ones that are ever so wonderful about this is how things should be, and y'all need to abide by this, but not me. Yeah, those people? Well, this one is from pjmedia.com. And, you know, I used to um, subscribe to PJ Media, and then I got really tired of some of the... I still listen to, like, Bill Whittle every once in a while, just for shits and giggles. And there's a couple others over there that occasionally I'll look up their videos on YouTube. But other than that, I got pretty tired of it pretty fast, actually. But... <clears throat> Over here, feminist professor recommends dangerous drug to make men breastfeed. Really? Seriously? You're going to do that to the babies? Shame on you. So, <clears throat> despite conventional knowledge that only women can breastfeed, a feminist professor at the University of Alberta, Canada says this isn't true, claiming that men and fathers are increasingly breastfeeding children by way of induced lactation. Mm. Writing in the journal Feminist Theory, sociology f uh, professor Robin Lee argues that men can easily breastfeed infants um, if only they agree to go through the draconian process of hormone supplementation and near constant nipple stimulation, which, okay, I don't know that guys would really hate the whole nipple stimulation thing because they have this thing for nipples anyway. So I don't know that that would necessarily be it. But the hormone thing, I mean, uh, my first question is, would they be forever blessed with moobs? That's my first question. 
because if they are, I'm sorry, I am not going to share my bras. Okay, you can have my bras because basically I, I wear camis now. So you can have the bras. You can even have the underwire ones because I just plain, I need to figure out something to do with those because I hate to throw them away. But, oh well. Goes on to say the pro, uh, process would start with high doses of female birth control pills and estrogen supplements to stimulate the state of pregnancy. Then those supplements would need to be swiftly discontinued to stimulate the rapid hormone changes that happen during birth. Oh great, it's not bad enough that she's psycho. And seriously, I went through that. I remember what I was like. Yeah, mood swing deluxe and cranky and uncomfortable and and you want two of them in the house like that when you've got a newborn? I don't think so. Then men would have to take the drug um, domper, domperidone, is that what you call it? Uh, apparently, it does not appear to be proven safe for use by men or women and cannot be prescribed in the United States because it lacks approval by the Food and Drug Administration. Oh, wait, once they find a way to make money off of it, that won't be a problem anymore. In fact, the FDA decreed um, importation of it is a violation of federal law in 20, or in 2004 citing reports of sudden death, heart attacks, and cardiac arrhythmias by patients abroad who had been prescribed it. The FDA also warned that it could harm infants, but obviously Lee doesn't care because it's not just women that lactate. Nevertheless, Lee encourages men to take the drug, claiming that it poses minimal risk to healthy individuals and does not appear to pose risk to infants. Does not appear. Sweetheart, have you had a child? That's number one. Number two, how many men are you trying to eliminate? You do realize that I, I understand with technology the way it is these days, you can make babies without having a man around. But where's the fun in that? It's the practicing that makes it so fun. Duh. PJ Media emailed Lee to ask if she was qualified to suggest it, but did not receive a response. Hmm. Herbal and natural supplements are also sometimes taken in order to boost milk production, adds Lee, conceding that some men prefer herbal supplements instead of taking this harmful big pharma nastiness. Nowhere in her article does Lee note the dangers of the drug, giving readers the illusion that it would be fine. Everything's fine and safe to take it if you wish to have sore boobs and have to have them be saggy for the rest of your life. Yeah, everything's fine. Of course, you could play with them all the time and then you wouldn't need your wife anymore, would you? <laughs> Of course, encouraging men to breastfeed isn't for naught, Lee writes. According to Lee, this would serve a powerful social justice agenda. Here we go. Since making men breastfeed destabilizes understandings of sex and gender and allows for new creative understandings of breastfeeding and sexual difference. Okay, you either have a gear shift and ball bearings or you have a credit card slot. <laughs> it's, I know that's a crude way of putting it. But come on, people. <clears throat> Anatomy. There are some people that have both. I don't know if, you know, if they consider themselves lucky or not, but there's very few, but still. Mm. Come on, lady. Lee also predicts that male breastfeeding would bolster feminism and queer political efforts. Oh, God. Well, that's that right there is enough reason for a lot of men to run away. <laughs> when carrying out, or when carried out by individuals other than cis women, what the hell is cis women? Breastfeeding challenges normative understandings of sex and gender, a goal that is shared by both feminists and queer politics, Lee writes. Well, 
sweetheart, I really hate to tell you this. And, you know, if if your gate swings that way, that's all well and good. But don't be forcing everybody else's gate to swing a particular way just because yours does. Okay? She also adds that male bread, breastfeeding opens up exciting possibilities for changing gender divisions of child care. Okay, now, my daughter, when she had all three of her children, she breastfed. She also had a pump because she worked full-time and daddy was a stay-at-home mom because she had the better paying job and when you figured how much daycare was going to cost, it was actually cheaper for daddy to stay home and take care of kids. So, she pumped, he fed children bottles and everything worked out just fine. He didn't have to have them in a little thing so that it would look like he was breastfeeding. Although my granddaughter um, did learn from watching um, her mommy nurse her two little brothers, she did walk around when mommy was nursing. She would go and get her dolly and lift up her shirt and hold her dolly there, which was really pretty cute to see her do that. But it's like, oh, sweetheart. <laughs> When you really do that, you're not going to be so thrilled to be doing that. It's not exactly the most comfortable thing in the world. But I digress. <clears throat> BJ Media researched or reached out to the journal's editors for comment on the recommendation that men take Domper, Domperidone, is that how you say that? But did not receive a, spons, a response in time for publication. So they will update the article if they hear back. But guys, don't get your, your moves in a knot, okay? Because you just might not get to. Cowboy! Hi, Cowboy Tech! How are you doing? NP Bunyan is here. Yay! I see P. Bunyan is here as well. Okay. Demon craps denounced Donald Trump. Lawless, treasonous, authoritarian, just voted, give vast, warrantless spying powers. Oh, piffle. Y'all did that the last time around. Shut the hell up. Shut your pie holes. Finger pointers, finger pointers everywhere. Hmm, a woman that's your sis? I know, Grim. Okay, I'm still, I'm catching up. Okay. What's that? Thomas, court, appearance, fee, what? Hmm? Moosey sharing all kind of stuff. Oh, poke him in the fucking eye. <laughs> Oh, I'm catching up on the chat over here. And yay, Moosey, you go, girl. <laughs> uh, yeah, a finger in the eye does work. What is that that she said in uh, Miss Congeniality? Sing. Um, solar plexus in step. Solar plexus in step. Um, neck. And then groin. Is that how that worked? Something along the... Whatever. I'm sure it would take you down pretty quick. I'm sure it would. <laughs> PB, you got 48 triple A's? Honey, you just start taking that medication and you'll soon have Kilimanjaro and you could feed a small African nation. <laughs> She wants you to, and it will cl it will help with so much injustice. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. What the? Oh, yeah. This woman's wacko. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that the higher education system is putting out a whole bunch of whack jobs lately? Oh, here I go calling names without actually getting to know her and having a wonderful discussion. I should really... Really, just not do that. <laughs> okay, what I should do and what I do do <laughs> are two completely different things. Okay, so now that we've had that lawmaker rant, let's go to this other lawmaker rant. This one is from World Truth TV. And this one, I actually kind of sort of, at least from the headline, I like it. Lawmaker introduces bill to prohibit forced microchipping. 
Booyah! It's not beyond the realm of possibility given today's technology and love for the nanny state among tens of millions of Americans that someday we might be required to be chipped. No, no, no. But it's an implant with a tiny microchip under our skin so that we can be constantly tracked by government at all levels. They really don't need to do that because if you've got a smartphone, <laughs> they're already doing that. Hmm. And because of, uh, because of the potentiality, one lawmaker from Nevada is introducing preemptive legislation to prohibit the practice, at least in her state. As reported by the Las Vegas Review-Journal, State Senator Becky Harris believes the day may not be far off when everyone would be forced to accept a microchip. I'm kissing my what? And whether the reason for the requirement would be law enforcement purposes, public safety, you know, those wonderful, it's for the public good, or just a matter of convenience. She believes it becomes or it comes dangerously close to infringing on our personal privacy. Dangerously close to? No. Most definitely steps across that line, actually picks up that line, uses it for a jump rope. They do the double jump kind of thing going on with it. And then, just as you're jumping over that rope, they pull it tight so it gets you in the dangly bits. No, it doesn't dangerously close to. <laughs> It, it totally fee-buttles it is what it does. <clears throat> As I began to look into the issue, I was surprised with the merit that I believed um, the issue warrants, she told members of the Senate Judiciary Committee in recent days. Her legislation, Senate Bill 109, would make it a Class C felony to force someone to accept a microchip that serves as an RFID or radio frequency identifier. This technology that has been around for some time now, which, yeah, I know people that have chipped their pets. I actually did chip one of my dogs, and then prior that was prior to actually understanding what all, because I listened to the whole, oh, but it will make it so easy to find him if he gets away, and, and it will do this, and it will do that, and no, no more, no more. In any case... Harris further noted that sales of subcutaneous RFID ch microchips around the globe are increasing every year because people are freaking nuts. She said that an Australian firm sold some 10,000 of them last year in kits where consumers are shown how to self-implant them. Oh, I can't see any way that that could go wrong. Infections galore? No. No, losing an appendage because <clears throat> of the infection. Oh, could that go wrong? Actually putting it into a vein or something and fucking shit up that way. Oh, no, I can't see that ever happening. Mm, bad idea. First F-bomb, by the way. Each kit costs about $100 and includes a tag and an injection tool. Adding that, according to the story she had read in the Wall Street Journal, anywhere from 30,000 to 50,000 chips have been sold around the world. Wow, that's an awful lot of dips. Chips go in dips. That, that's just the way it works. Chip and dip. So, she further noted that there are some European companies that require their employees to be chipped for security. Ah, single finger salute. Employees of some firms in Belgium and Sweden use chips to identify or yeah, to identify employees and grant them access to facilities. Another single finger salute. I'm running out of fingers. It's done over the idea to unlock doors and use copy machines or maybe pay for lunch. You could use your hand. No. 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 Harris's legislation was fashioned after other bills that have been passed in the last 10 other, or in at least 10 other states, and she said it would not prevent voluntary chipping. 
just would not allow companies or institutions of government to require chipping. Hey, sweetheart, you know what? If you're not going to let them require chipping, step that up a notch and over to the side and make it to where they can't require inoculations either. That would really be special. Um, for the, at least 10 years, microchipping technology has been available to owners of pets who have them chipped so that in case they run away or are stolen, they can be located. That's if you've got someone that's got a chip reader that can scan wherever the chip got placed. If you don't, you're SOL. Also, some people believe that certain medical conditions like Alzheimer's disease might benefit from being chipped because they sometimes wander off and forget where they are. And this is a case of treating the symptom and not the dis-ease. What you need to do is treat the dis-ease. Get this person to be consuming foods that help the brain instead of, you know, and treat that because there have been cases of reversal of Alzheimer's with proper diet. Just saying. Dr. Katherine Albrecht, an anti-RFID advocate, privacy researcher, and co-author of the book Spy Chips, How Major Corporations and Government Plan to Track Your Every Purchase and Watch Your Every Move, which they're already doing that, notes that um, electronic tracking is practically everywhere now, and that includes on primary school campuses. Schools of all places should be teaching children how to participate in a free democratic society, not conditioning them to be tracked like cattle. And you know what irritates me? And I know there's going to be some people that are going to go, oh, come on, Grammy. But there are people that come across the border that are here for nefarious purposes. And what irritates the hell out of me is they were able to, to track, you know, when the mad cow shit was going on, they were able to track back to the damn near the stall that calf was born in. And yet they couldn't find 10 million people that snuck across and are doing things that the rest of us that were born here would go to jail for. They don't. They just get a trip home to which they come back again. I don't give a shit where you're from. If you come over here and you start stealing shit, you start abusing people, beating people up, raping people, killing people, whatever, you need to be put in a cage until you stop doing that shit. That is the solution right now, is put them in a cage if they kill people. Well, you, sorry, pissing people off, I'm sure, but I'm so freaking tired of this shit of, oh, well, we'll just deport them. And then they're back within 48 hours. I know this because I used to work with some of these people. Now, some of, most of them, I would say 99 out of 100 were wonderful people. They just wanted to come here and, and make some good money, send it home so that when they were ready to retire, they could go home and they could retire in style. You know what they were doing? Honestly, they were doing jobs that nobody else wanted to do. So, and they did them quite well, and they made very good money at it. And I know of two of them that have now moved back to their native country, and they are living quite well, at least according to the reports that I'm getting from mutual friends. So, I don't have a problem with someone wishing to better themselves, but when you come over, when you break into my house, we're going to have some problems, and Bessie's going to talk to you. I may talk to you as well, but Bessie will do the bulk of the talking, and Bessie's louder and messier. Same principle. You sneak in with nefarious purposes. Don't be surprised if uh, the results are not necessarily what you had planned on. Just saying. Oy. So, back to this. God, I went off on a rant. 
<clears throat> so, tracked like cattle. Yes, here we go. See, that's what started me, the mad cow disease thing. Cobwebs, touching. Albrecht, who is also the director of Consumers Against Supermarket Privacy Invasion and um, Numbering, said in a statement as reported by Fox News, that districts planning to use RFID should brace themselves for apparent backlash, protests, and lawsuits. I would drop kick someone through the goalposts of life if they said that they was going to RFID my grandkids. I don't give a shit what my children say. If I had to drop kick my children, I would. You ain't going to RFID my grandbabies. Sorry, ain't going to happen. She was joined by the Electronic Privacy Information Center, which also opposes tracking of students. And in a paper published with Albrecht's organization and others concerned about protecting privacy in the digital age, EPIC and the other group urged that schools adopt robust privacy safeguards if they move forward with RFID tracking of students. Well, no, you, no, no, no. Schools using tracking technology are not proposing that students be chipped. They are, however, required to carry electronic RFID emitting cards so their locations can be tracked. Now, I do know that there have been some cases where children have been not allowed to enter the school because they forgot their little badge at home. What kind of society do we live in where our children have to wear a frickin' badge to school? How badly have we failed that that is starting to happen? We failed pretty bad, if you ask me. Two things come to mind in all of this. One, that subcutaneous tracking technology is actually making inroads in various societies voluntarily and number two, that it has become so normalized in many ways that state and local governments actually have to write and pass legislation preventing the mandatory chipping of citizens, in America no less. This just goes to prove that some people are either born or haplessly conditioned to live as sheep. Meh. Thank you, World Truth. TV. Yeah, I ain't gonna. Only chips I have, I have with dip. I prefer with salsa. Thank you very much. Oh, Beth just shared a link. Eric Clapton says he's going deaf. Why does that not surprise me? Yes, Grimmy, weed fixes Alzheimer's. Also, so, um, and yes, get rid of all of your aluminum cookware. Do not use um, anything with Teflon, but um, don't take any big pharma. Don't do the flu shots, any of that other shit. Yes, Cowboy Tech, Salon or uh, Turmeric works, cilantro works, um, coconut oil works because you need that cholesterol. Your brain is like 67% fat. You need that cholesterol. You also need CoQ10 because CoQ10 helps your liver pro uh, process. So, yeah. There's all kinds, all kinds of wonderful natural ways of dealing with Alzheimer's. Chipping them would be the last resort, at least in my mind. Okay. Put this one over here on uh, this effing site as well. And I think I will also put it on um, in the mind site. Just because. And that's all of the ones that I found on Twitter this evening. I'm done with Twitter. <laughs> So, okay. Oh, cripes. Oh, my cord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
get stuck underneath my keyboard sometimes and then I'm pushing the space bar and it don't do nothing so I get this really long word <laughs> pushing buttons pushing buttons okay so let's see here we go you know since we were talking about some healthy things how about we check this out um, 34 reasons why you need hydrogen peroxide. This is also from worldtruth.tv. <clears throat> Found it in my pocket. So hydrogen peroxide is chemically represented as H2O2 and is one of the most common household disinfectants in the world. But did you know that hydrogen peroxide is the only germicidal agent composed only of water, and oxygen. Odds are pretty good that you have a bottle in your medicine cabinet or under your kitchen sink right now. Now people typically use hydrogen peroxide for sanitizing small cuts and as a whitener for delicate items. However, there is much more to this little brown bottle than most of us realize. And the little brown bottle, yeah, that's, that's good for those kind of uses. But if you really want to get some, the good stuff, get the food grade hydrogen peroxide, which is like 35%, um, and dilute it down with distilled water. All kinds of wonderful uses for it. I would not use the brown bottle for disinfecting wounds, but I would use the food grade. And I do happen to have some food grade myself. Also, quick little tip, uh, keep your food grade hydrogen peroxide in the refrigerator because if it gets warm, it could go boom. <laughs> it would not be good. So keep it in your refrigerator. Um, okay, so number one, disinfect small wounds. Hydrogen peroxide is a natural antiseptic, therefore one of the most common uses is to clean wounds to prevent infection. Also, if you are having issues with gum disease, um, swish it around in your mouth or gargle with it. That will help, that also helps with throat issues as well. Uh, bleach your hair. Yeah, peroxide blondes, don't you remember? Because it's more gentle than household bleach, hydrogen peroxide is also great for lightening your hair. If you just want to add highlights to get the classic sun bleached look, spray, um, spray some hydrogen peroxide over damp hair and let it soak in for 10 or 15 minutes before rinsing it out. Use it as a whitening toothpaste by mixing it with baking soda and uh, I also, I would, I would also do a little bit of coconut oil because coconut oil is also good for that and do a drop of like an essential oil like clove or peppermint, something along those lines. It helps remove stains from your teeth, of course so does coconut oil, and it helps your mouth stay healthy. Ah, see, number five, antiseptic mouth rinse. Use a cap full of hydrogen peroxide as a mouth rinse to help whiten teeth and kill germs that cause bad breath. No more scope. Um, to disinfect toothbrushes. You can soak your toothbrush um, in hydrogen peroxide and it kills staph bacteria and other germs common to bathroom environment. Also, I know you've probably heard this and seen the little memes, but please do not keep your toothbrush out in the open. Put it in your medicine cabinet. There are reasons for that. When you have a duty and you flush, <laughs> some of that stuff becomes aerosolized. And just the thought of that on my toothbrush, no, my toothbrush stays within my medicine cabinet. Of course, the only thing in my medicine cabinet is my toothbrush and some tweezers and some band-aids and some oils. <laughs> Pretty much that's it. Oh, well. <clears throat> whiten your nails. Soak your fingertips and toes in hydrogen peroxide to naturally whiten your nails. Ah, huh, I did not know that. To clear up acne, you can use it um, as a face rinse to kill the bacteria that causes acne and help clear your complexion. It also helps heal boils. Pour a half a bottle into uh, warm bath water and soak to treat boils. 
Mix equal parts of hydrogen peroxide and warm water to make a foot soak that will naturally soften corns and calluses. Nifty! Number 11, remove earwax. Put, oh, I would not recommend putting a couple of drops of hydrogen peroxide in ears. No, no, do not do that because it bubbles. And that, no. I wouldn't recommend this one. Do not put it in your ears, peeps. Seriously. Prevent swimmers here. Now, I could see putting it on a Q-tip or something like that and around the, the outside, but do not put it in your ears. Mm-mm. Uh, let's see. Prevent swimmer's ear. Mix equal parts of hydrogen peroxide and vinegar in a small dropper bottle and put several drop. No, don't put it in your ears. Relieve, relieve ear infection. Once again, they want you to put it in your ears. Don't do that. Number 14, kill subdermal parasites. If you apply hydrogen peroxide to skin affected with mites or other parasites, um, it kills them naturally. I did not know that. Uh, treat foot fungus. If you co combine parts of hydrogen peroxide and water in a dark colored spray bottle um, and apply it to skin affected by foot fungus each night, it will stop the fungal growth. Do you know that you can also use uh, Vicks Vapor Rub or Mentholatum to, if you have toenail fungus, put that on your toes and that will get rid of the toenail fungus. Learned that from my chiropractor. Um, uses in the kitchen and the bath, you can use it for clear, cleaning tile surfaces. It removes the dirt and stains. It also works on mold. Um, ew. If you have a cockroach in a child's ear, three dro drops on the roach, and the roach will back out. Ow! Ugh! That just... Ow! Not cool. Owie, owie. Well, free and slave, thank you for that, but... Ugh! Wow! Um... Starting fluid works, too. Oh, I wouldn't do that. Ooh, ah, ah. Okay, back to, um, yes, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, if you mix it with white flour, create a thick paste, apply it to the grout, and cover it with plastic wrap overnight, and the next day simply rinse with water for whiter grout. I hadn't thought of that. I may have tried that. Hmm. Pour half a cup of hydrogen peroxide into a toilet bowl and let it, soak for at least 30 minutes to clean and remove stains. Huh. Or spray hydrogen peroxide on soap scum and dirt and stains in the bathtub and let it sit for at least 30 minutes and then rinse to loosen the grime and make it cleaning easier. Hmm. Hadn't thought of that one either. I have used it to control mold and mildew. Had a leak in my house in town and used hydrogen peroxide, and yes, it did clean up the mold and mildew. Um, and it also removed the discoloration as well. Uh, you can use it for cleaning glass surfaces, use it on dirty mirrors and other glass surfaces to loosen the dirt, wipe away and it with a lint-free cloth. Um, use it for disinfecting countertops, especially after you've done like preparation of chicken, or fish, you know, uh, basically any kind of meats that you're preparing, um, spray that on your cutting board and on your countertops. Lot better than the over-the-counter cleaners. Lot safer for you too. Soak your dish rags and sponges in it, and it will do. Oh for 15 to 30 minutes to disinfect them. Cool. Ah, number 24, disinfecting cutting boards. See, told you. Number 25, wash fruits and vegetables. Now, if you're going to wash your fruits and vegetables with hydrogen peroxide, definitely get the food grade. Definitely. Don't use the brown bottle. I've done the brown bottle. I know. I didn't know there was a difference until I actually went and did some research because I had someone tell me, use the food grade. 
And so I did some research and then I got some food grade and that's what I use. And the food grade really, I mean, it's 35% and you're supposed to dilute it down with distilled water. So seriously, it is so much cheaper to just buy a bottle of the food grade and keep it in your fridge and dilute it down as you need it. Wow, is it a lot. I'm, I've been working on the same bottle for six months now and it's only half gone. So a lot cheaper, at least for me, to use the food grade. Uh, number 26, clean your refrigerator with it. You can spray hydrogen peroxide around the inside of your refrigerator and let it soak a few minutes and then wipe it off. Once again, use the food grade. If it's going to be close to food, use the food grade. Just my recommendation. Um, you can use it for whitening your laundry. Uh, you can, uh, number 28, remove organic stains. If you mix two parts hydrogen peroxide with one part dish detergent and apply to organic stains such as coffee, wine, blood, or sweat, it, would, it will help to remove them. Excuse me. Hydrogen peroxide will bleach darker fabrics, so use that with caution, which, yeah, just like with using bleach, you just got to be a little careful um, to defunct musty fabrics. Mix hydrogen peroxide with white vinegar and soak the musty fabrics to remove unwanted odors. For cleaning rugs and carpets, you can spray it onto light-colored carpets and it removes stains from mud, food, etc. Just remember that it will bleach some fabrics. Use it for uh, to refresh your reusable bags, like your grocery bags or whatever that you use for shopping. You can use it to spray those. Disinfect lunch boxes. Once again, I would recommend the food grade for that one. Cleanse dehumidifiers. Yeah. Definitely, because, you know, a lot of people don't realize your dehumidifier can get mold and mildew in it. So, yes, you need to cleanse them very well, and hydrogen peroxide is not nearly as noxious as bleach or some of the other things that they recommend you use. And finally, to improve seed germination. If you soak your seeds in hydrogen peroxide to remove fungal spores and you increase the germination rate. Now, once again, use the food grade. Remember to always use caution when using hydrogen peroxide, especially in higher concentrations, as the liquid and vapors can burn skin and lungs. Also be very careful to never swallow hydrogen peroxide when using it orally. <clears throat> Consumption of H2O2 can be severely detrimental to your health, cause dizziness, nausea, vomiting, and in large enough amounts, even death. So yes, use it carefully, use it wisely, but also, if you get the food grade, if you swallow a little bit of it, it's not, yeah, just don't, don't chug it, okay? So... Yes, H2O2 for cleaning coins, too. That's true. Okay. Okay. Oh, wow, free enslaved. I didn't, I really didn't know that that worked. The whole cockroach out of an ear. Oof. Ouch. It sounds very painful. <sighs> and that, that would have to be, I would think, a nasty environment to for a little one to get a cockroach in their ear at a daycare. Oof. Which is why I'm really, really glad my children didn't do daycare. Okay. I'm going to just click on that one just because. I know, Bubba. You probably want to go outside, but you got to wait till I'm done. Okay, let's see. Where else do I wish to go? I will put this over here.
Uh, let's see. Dang it. I'm My cord is so short. <laughs> It keeps getting underneath my keys because, well, it has nothing to do with the fact that my arm brushes it and it gets underneath my keys. It's because it's short. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay. I have a couple other herbal things here that I want to get to. Um, from Mrs. Happy Homemaker. A homemade vapor rub which uh, I haven't tried it yet, but I do have the ingredients to do this, and so I am going to try that probably this weekend because it's going to be cold, and I'm not going to venture out anywhere. So, from MrsHappyHomemaker.com, a homemade vapor rub with only five ingredients, and a com it's completely natural and works better than the store-bought stuff. So, if you've got the sickies, and we all get them, and, well, maybe you don't call them the sickies. Maybe you have a more grown-up name for it. But the point is, we all feel like total poop from time to time. See, I like the way she writes already. And sometimes we don't even feel that bad, but we have to deal with the snotties, the stuffies, or the coffees. <coughs> so especially in the winter, and although there are us lucky ones, like my mom and I, who have disobedient sinuses all year around, sometimes I feel like I should be buying stock in vapor rub. But why would I want to buy stock in something that I can make myself? So, um, you could buy, your own, buy vapor rub, but she likes hers a lot better than the store-bought counterpart. She also loves that it can be done in a matter of minutes. It's cost-efficient, and it lasts a lot long, or it lasts a long time. Plus, it's all natural, which is a big win. So, um, all you need to make it is olive oil, beeswax, and a few essential oils. Now, her favorite combination of the oils is rosemary, eucalyptus, and lavender, which would all be very, very appropriate. She said some people like to use peppermint or camphor as well, but she personally thinks it's a little harsh for her and her children, which I would use peppermint, but not camphor. Okay, you two crazy brains. My dogs are starting to get rambunctious. The great thing about the essential oils is even though they don't look like it, they actually go a long way if you buy quality. Be sure to get good quality oils. So first thing you do is combine the olive oil and beeswax in a saucepan on medium heat and stir with a wooden spoon until the beeswax is melted. Then turn off the heat and stir in 25 to 30 drops of eucalyptus, 20 to 25 drops of rosemary, and 10 to 15 drops of lavender. Pour it into jars, and uh, she uses little four ounce jars for this, and seal the jars and allow them to cool. They will set up into a spreadable solid, and uh, it's the same, basically, consistency of vapor rub. It's smooth like silk and not all gooey feeling. So quick tip is while this is perfect amount of essential oils for her, it's not quite enough if it's not quite enough for you, you can always remelt it and add more essential oils till it's the strength at, to your liking. So and she does have a little um printable recipe on the bottom. So it's uh, one fourth cup extra virgin olive oil, two teaspoons of beeswax, and then the oils that she listed. So I would probably decrease the eucalyptus by about 10 drops and put that, mu that many drops of peppermint just because I like peppermint. <laughs> but that's about the only change I would do. They really do back right. That's cool. See, and I, I've 
I've had people tell me that you put um, you put straight hydrogen peroxide, which into your ear, and if you have an infection or something or some other issue, it can get down in there and really mess stuff up. So that's mm, I could see putting it on a cotton swab or on a cotton ball and putting that on your ear, but I can't see dripping it. Ugh. But hey, if it works for you, free and slave, that's awesome. That is awesome. And if it worked for that cockroach, that's even better. Oh. Meister Brower, you should see my two dogs. Oh, cripes. They have a blanket that's an old, like, moving blanket kind of thing that has been washed and washed and washed and washed. And they've taken to uh, tug of warring with it in the living room when they're cold, well, when it's cold outside. Because they want to, you know, they like to get a little bit rowdy. Well, now I have blanket bits all over my floor because they got a little rambunctious with the tug of warren. <laughs> that blanket's going to have to go bye bye, probably come spring. But until then, I keep washing it. <laughs> And keep unknotting it because it's so very religious now. My puppies, they're so silly. Can't have anything to do with their human, can it? <laughs> okay. This one, I think I'm actually going to have to do the little nursey gal over here on this effing site. And I'll also put it over here on mines as well. Just so. There we go. Oh, oh and yesterday, was it yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, I went to the eye doctor and found out that my vision is basically, other than improving a little bit over the last couple of years distance-wise, but losing ground on the up-close and personal-wise, <laughs> my vision has been stable for the last 10 years. It's like, holy shit, really? That's the longest I've ever gone without having to do basically a new... What? Oh, thanks, Free and Slave. 50-50 is good for cleaning dog's ears. Ah. I don't know. No. I I would just as soon buy as little as possible from the local pharmacy. <laughs> she's a nice lady, but she's such a nice lady. But I'd, uh, um, I don't like walking into pharmacies anymore. If I don't have to, I ain't gonna. Pretty much that simple. Okay. Hi, Johnny9999 over here on Mines. Oh, <laughs> I like this. I like this meme. I shared it around a few places. Here's an idea. A reality show where socialist college students are sent to a country that closely resembles their desired political system and left to survive for a few months. Yeah. I actually do like that meme. I think if someone really, really thinks that a certain mindset, a certain ideology, a certain way of governance is an excellent idea and they're basing it upon whatever they, you know, whatever, you know, and there is an actual working model somewhere in the world, feel free to go on over there. Check it out. Live for a year. Yeah. And then that way... You know, you will find out real quick just how well that works. And if you want to bring it home. Huh. I needed a drink. Excuse me. Okay. Back to my pocket I go. Now, I do have one other thing in here. Uh, or maybe not. Thought maybe I did, but maybe not. 
Oh, yes. And Grimmy, yeah. You know what? I think I'll go there. Because Grimmy shared it to me the other day. And uh, he was being snarky. And so I'm just going to go right along with it. <laughs> Actually, I think he's being quite helpful. From Popular Science. This pill could help you figure out why you're always farting. <laughs> uh, beans. Other things that produce. Yeah. Everyone gets gas. And almost everyone could stand to live without it. But figuring out what drives gas is a difficult endeavor. Even for doctors. There's a multitude of foods that can initiate gassiness to varying degrees depending on the individual. But there's a new gadget that might someday help. Now see, I know of an old gadget that does work and you can buy them at craft fairs. It's a wooden spoon and the handle is split and they put little rungs inside the handle and you just put that spoon down inside of whatever food you're preparing that has a tendency to cause you to be effervescent and the farts find the spoon and they just climb right up the little ladder and jump out and so you don't get them <laughs> that's what the little tag says at the at the craft shows <laughs> oh well in a paper in the journal Natural Electronics, a pair of researchers just introduced an electronic pill that can measure the different types of gas in a person's intestines. No, I'm not swallowing an electronic pill. This information might not only um, help pinpoint the cause of excess gas, but could also determine an optimal diet to avoid bloat. I don't bloat. Cause I don't hold it in. <laughs> so, while gas is sometimes caused by swallowing air or chewing gum, food is a fairly common culprit. Food can produce gas when we aren't able to break it down, either because we don't have the right enzymes or the meal is extremely fibrous. Mm -hmm. Humans can't digest fiber, so it travels down our guts and into our colons undigested. Well, isn't that a lovely image? So, all gas may feel like it's created equal. Oh, you hush, little girly. All gas may feel like it's created equal when it's gurgling around in your gut, but doctors generally have to know the exact cause of your flatulence in order to fix it. Why fix it? Go shopping at Target or Kmart or Walmart. You know, and you don't necessarily have to purchase anything. Just get yourself a buggy and walk around the place. And when you're feeling extremely effervescent, just let one go and quick hightail it out of that aisle. And that way somebody else gets to enjoy. That's how you deal with it. Well, that's okay. That's how Amy Lynn deals with it. And I I know this because I went shopping with her when she did that, and oh my God, they almost had a puddle on the floor because I was laughing so hard I almost peed myself. <laughs> oh, that child is crazy. In any case, <clears throat> they uh, analyze what type of gas is inside a person's gut, and there is a, uh, let's see, a lead study author, Kurush Kalantar Zahid, says doctors can now distinguish whether gas is caused by malabsorption or not being able to break down certain foods, irritable bowel syndrome, bacterial overgrowth in the small intestine, or something entirely different. Once identified, people can try to avoid the source of gas entirely. Ah, uh, there's no fun in that. Inside the pill rests a temperature sensor, a tiny computer, and a radio frequency transmitter with batteries. How big is this pill? I want to see a picture. Oh, good God, no. <laughs> oh, good Lord. That just is... And it's got copper coils and everything. No. No. I'm not... Sorry, Grim. Appreciate your care and concern, 
but I will just keep it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> crowded elevators. Yes. What was that joke? Little old lady standing in a crowded elevator. And one beautiful babe comes walking in and she's smelling very perfumey. And she looks down at the little old lady and says, Chanel number five. And quotes a price for the bottle. And, you know, looking all whatever. And then another young lovely lady steps into the elevator. And she says, oh, do whatever. I don't do perfume. And it's even more expensive per ounce or whatever and looking down at the other two ladies and they're riding up in the elevator and they get to the floor with a little old lady it's her turn to get off of the elevator and so she walks past them lets one rip turns around and looks at him and says broccoli 79 cents a pound at Safeway <laughs> I thought that would be me <laughs> I would do that <sighs> just because. <laughs> oh, although knowing my luck, I would never be in that situation to where I could do that. But that would be fun, don't you think? <laughs> oh, I'm so naughty sometimes, but yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, and I'm right at the perfect little emoticons for this one too <laughs> thanks Grimmy oh no I really don't want to have an RFID chip in my intestines although that could be interesting I wonder if it has volume <laughs> oh just let her rip okay I think I'm going to go and check out the pig real quick, just because, just because I've been farting around, <laughs> pun intended, and what are you to, oh, Snuffles is trying to get Bubba to play tug of war with her, and he's laying on the blanket. <laughs> it's like, nope, I'm just going to lay here, and so she's going to whine. Okay, over here on the pig. Puritanism. It's the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy. This is based on an H.L. Mencken quote. <laughs> wow, yeah. Someone somewhere may be happy. We've got to make a law to stop that shit. Okay, in the quotable quotes section, the trouble is that there's such negativity now, Leno said. When I did the show, Bush was dumb and Clinton was horny and it was human problems. Now it's all anti-women, anti-LGBT, anti-Muslim, anti-Mexican, anti-Salvadorian. It's such a negative thing, which, yeah, there's so many antis. Anti, anti, anti. What the hell is wrong with you people? Now, and see, I see an awful lot of this as... Who's the one that said it was anti in the first place? Are you the are you the special little individual that but they're anti. Well, maybe they just plain don't like it and you're calling them names and then they get pissy because you're calling them names. It's not necessarily a maturity kind of thing, but just saying. <sighs> oh my goodness, confused resistance readers put wrong fire by fury on Amazon Amazon's bestseller list. <laughs> Apparently shoppers hoping to buy Michael Wolff's new Fire and Fury book on Trump or on the Trump White House have accidentally been buying a book about World War II historian that now finds itself on some of Amazon's bestseller lists. <laughs> The book by University of Toronto professor Randall Hansen, titled Fire and Fury, The Allied Bombing of Germany, uh, was published nearly 10 years ago, but Hansen noticed an uptick of sales activity lately, <clears throat> and he said it amused me. Part of me thought, can people really be that dumb to be confusing these books? Yes, Hansen, yes, they can. And that's half the fun. 
Some buyers were upset to receive Hansen's book, which tells the story of the American and British bombing campaign through the eyes of those involved. It had a couple of bitter comments, said Hansen, and there was one tweet. He came forward and said, I bought this book by accident, and there's no way I'm reading it in kind of an accusatory tone. And I thought, well, it's not my fault, mate, which no, it's not. Hansen says that he won't know exactly how many copies of his book were sold until he receives his royalty check next month. So, oh, Murgatroyd, lost words from our childhood. Do you, anybody else remember Murgatroyd? Holy Murgatroyd. Yeah, or heavens to Murgatroyd. Apparently, Hambo the other day, um, a not-so-elderly, 65-year-old um, lady said something to her son about driving a jalopy, and he looked at her quizzically and said, What the heck is a jalopy? OMG, which is a new phrase. He'd never heard of the word jalopy. She knew she was old, but not that old. And... Uh, I hope that you are honky-dory after you read this and chuckle. About a month ago, I illuminated some old ex expressions that have become obsolete because of the inexorable march of technology. These phrases include, don't touch that dial, carbon copy, you, should, um, you sound like a broken record, and hung out to dry, which I prefer, and hung out to dry is not necessarily old-fashioned or gone because I'm getting a new uh, clothesline built for me. Yay! I'm gonna hang stuff out to dry. Yeah. Back in the olden days we had a lot of moxie. We'd put on our best bib and tucker to straighten up and fly right. Heavens to Betsy, G. Willikers, Jumpin' Jehoshaphat, and holy moly! Yeah, I've used all of those, probably on the radio. <laughs> we were in like Flynn and living the life of Riley. And even a regular guy couldn't accuse us of being a knuckle knucklehead, a nincompoop, or a pill. I have been called a pill so many times. And I just look at him and say, yeah, just what the doctor ordered. And then I'll turn and walk away because I'm obnoxious like that. Or how about not for all the tea in China? Back in the olden days, life used to be swell. But when's the last time you used or you heard anything was swell? Hmm. Actually, today, I went to Dollar General and bought some almond milk because I've gotten kind of addicted to putting that in my coffee in the afternoon because my tummy gets a little upset sometimes. And the gal at the register said, how are you doing today? And I said, I'm peachy. And she said, I'm Kino. And it was like, oh, that's just too fun. <laughs> I love it when people play along. So, <clears throat> Swell has gone the way of beehives, page boys, and the D.A., of spats, knickers, fedoras, poodle skirts, saddle shoes, and pedal pushers. And don't forget saddle stitched pants. Oh, and my aching back. Kilroy was here, but he isn't anymore. We wake up from what surely has been just a short nap. And before we can say, well, I'll be a monkey's uncle, or this is a fine kettle of fish we discover that the words we grew up with, the words that seemed omnipresent as oxygen, have vanished with scarcely a notice from our tongues and our pens and our keyboards. So poof go the words of our youth, the words we've left behind. We blink and they're gone. Where have all the great phrases gone? Well, Let's all go to the beach Saturday. Yeah, well, that one sounds fun. They're long gone. You know, like, pshaw. Oh, no, I still say that. Or the milkman did it, which actually is quite factual in my family because my dad went to get the milk, and we always used to tell my little brother, who was the only blonde kid in the family, we'd tell him, 
<clears throat> You're the milkman's kid. God, bothered him forever until he realized that dad was the milkman. <laughs> How about this one? Hey, it's your nickel. Or don't forget to pull the chain. Or how about knee-high to a grasshopper? Oh, hell, I still say that one, too. Or, oh, fiddlesticks. Going like 60. Or, I'll see you in the funny papers. <laughs> Man, I say a lot of these. <laughs> Don't take any wooden nickels and wake up and smell the roses. No, I'm just wake up and smell the coffee. Because it's a perkin, hun. So... It turns out that there are more of these lost words and expressions than Carter has liver, liver pills. And this can be disturbing stuff, because Carter's little liver pills are gone too. We of a certain age have been blessed to live in changeable times. For a child, each new word is like a shiny toy, a toy that no has no age. We, at the other end of the chronological arc, had the advantage of remembering. There were words that once stuttered their, or, yeah, that once strutted their, strutted their hour, okay, strutted their hour upon the earthly stage, and now are heard no more. Honey, you haven't been listening to me, have you, Hambo? <laughs> Except for our collective memory. And it's one of the greatest advantages of aging. It leaves us to wonder where Superman will find a phone booth. See you later, alligator. Okie dokie. Because we are the children of the fabulous 50s and 60s. No one will ever have the opportunity again. We were given one of the most precious gifts. Our memories. And all of these words and phrases were known and understood by everyone, even without the Internet. Okay, guys, you redeemed yourself. That's a good one. That's a good one. Thanks, Hambo and Porcus, on that one, whichever one of you wrote that. Now, for this date in history, the 12th of, sep of September. <laughs> <laughs> The 12th of January. There you go. 1966. Holy dynamic duos. Batman, a boob tube cult classic. Batman starring Adam Batman West and Burt Robin Ward debuts on ABC. But a 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 Batman. I remember that. Pow, zang, boom. All the fun sound effects. <laughs> and this date in history, the 12th of January, 1969, led by their brash young quarterback, Joe Namath, the New York Jets us usher in a new era in American football when they beat the Baltimore Colts 16-7 to in Super Bowl III. Well, that was this date in history, according to those piggish guys over on piggazette.com so let me see what's going on over here Lisa B hi lady okay Vavoom. oh <laughs> Felix the cat is that what it was oh yeah penny loafers uh-huh I'm I'm checking out Heavens to Murgatroyd. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, that was um, oh the one that was always exit stage left. That was that cat. I don't remember the cat's name, but that was that cat. Um, he was an orange cat with a the the straw hat, you know the ones that the. Oh, criminy Christmas. Shazam! I'm still reading these things. That's how it's so funny. Oh, you guys remember all this stuff, too. <laughs> um, let's see. I cannot think. I will think of that cat's name at 2 in the morning. Oh, my goodness. I did not shut off the dinger on that one. Oops. Oops. 
My bad. Okay. Let me go back and look at my pocket. So, I'm going to see what the pocket has recommended for me. Oh, oh, you know what? I saw this one earlier today on Fakie Book, and I actually had did a little bit of a diatribe on the post, because it's like, really? Seriously, people? Yes, climate change is happening, because that's what climate does. It changes. Yes, it's man-made, but it's by those people that are giving us the tic-tac-toe in the sky. So... This is from environment.princeton.edu. So let's check this shit out, shall we? It's from January the 9th of this year. Spotty coverage. Climate models underestimate cooling effect of daily cloud cycle. Well, that's because they're cloud seeding. That's what they call it. Princeton University researchers have found that the climate models scientists um, used to project future conditions on our planet underestimate the cooling effect that clouds have on a daily or even hourly basis, particularly over land. Researchers report in the journal Nature Communications, December the 22nd, that models tend to factor in too much of the sun's daily heat, which results in warmer, drier conditions than might actually occur. The researchers found that inaccuracies in accounting for the diurnal, wow, that sounds disgusting, actually, or daily cloud cycle did not seem to invalidate climate projections. Really? But they did increase the margin of error for the crucial tool scientists use to understand how climate change will affect us. It's important to get the right result for the right reason. In other words, don't fudge the numbers and don't discard facts that do not fit in with your preconceived notions. That's my interpretation of that. Um, this was said by corresponding author Amilcare, Amil, Amilcare, okay, Porporato, who is a professor of Civil and Environmental Engineering and the Princeton Environment Institute. These errors can trickle down into other changes such as projecting fewer and weaker storms. We hope that our results are useful for improving how clouds are modeled, which would improve the calibration of climate models and make the results much more reliable. Now, he and the first author, Jun Yin, a postdoctoral research associate in civil engineering, or civil and environmental engineering, found that not accurately capturing the daily cloud cycle has the sun bombarding Earth with an extra 1 to 2 watts of energy per square meter. The increased carbon dioxide in the atmosphere since the start of the Industrial Age is estimated to produce an extra 3.7 watts of energy per square meter. The error here is half of that. So in that, in that sense, it becomes sustainable. Aha! Uh -huh. And actually, if you look back through the ice core data, if you trust the ice core data or any of the science stuff that's out there, there have been times when Mother Earth had a carbon um, concentration or carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere that was much higher than what it is now. So, did we do it back then too? Apparently, they undertook their study after attending a seminar on cloud coverage and climate sensitivity. The speaker talked a lot about where the clouds are, but not when. We thought the timing was just as important, and we were surprised to find that there were fewer studies on that. Clouds change during the day and from day to day, unlike the clouds that are in the NASA photos of the Earth, which stay stationary 24 hours a day. I'm not saying seven days a week because I haven't actually checked the, the seven days a week thing, but 24 hours a day, those clouds stay stationary. So, according to the climate or according to the NASA images that are 
computer-generated images. Mm. But we'll move along from that one. Okay, so climate models do a good job of capturing the average cloud coverage, and, uh, but they miss important peaks in actual cloud coverage. These peaks can have a dramatic effect on daily conditions, such as in the early afternoon during the hardest, hottest part of the day. So, climate scientists have the clouds, but they're miss, they miss the timing. And there's a strong sensitivity between the daily cloud cycle and temperature. It's like a person putting on a blanket at night or using a parasol during the day. If you miss that, it makes a huge difference. Who to thunk? The researchers used satellite images from 1986 to 2005 to calculate the average clouds or diurnal, whatever, cycles of clouds in each season worldwide. Yin analyzed the cloud coverage at three-hour intervals, looking at more than 6,000 points on the globe, measuring 175 miles by 175 miles each. Honey, I'm really glad that you were looking at these images, but, sweetheart, I really need to tell you, those are CGI. <laughs> those are not real pictures taken from satellites. Sorry. Even NASA admits that. Yin and Porporado compared the averages that they came up with to those from nine climate models used by climate scientists. The majority of models have the thickest coverage occurring in the morning over the land rather than in the early afternoon when clouds shield the earth from the sun's most intense heat. A small difference in timing can have a big radiative impact, said Yin and the researchers plan to explore the effect different types of clouds have on climate model projections, as well as how cloud cycles influence the year-to-year -year variation of Earth's temperature, especially in relation to extreme rainfall. I'm wondering if they're actually going to do any kind of investigation into those wonderful man-made clouds that are up there. The tic-tac-toe ones that they now have a name for that I can't recall, but yes, they do have a name for them. They're even in children's cartoons now so that they can acclimate you to them so you don't see the sky as being odd. Mommy, why are those fun little tic-tac-toe grids in the sky, but they're not in my cartoons? Oh, wait, yes, they are. They even happened way back when Sleeping Beauty. Ah, see, they're indoctrinating. They're getting you subliminally to accept this shit. Okay, I'm bored with this. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and share it. And I'm sure they're going to play with it. You know, whatever. So... Heavens to Mer Snacklepuss, there you go. Good one, Kate. Yep, that's the one. Heavens to Murgatroyd. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Thank you, Miss Kate, for finding that. You're so awesome. Or at least for sharing that YouTube video. Sweet. And, yeah, Sylvester said, suffer and suck a tash. So, yes, Sylvester had a lisp. I don't remember if Snacklepuss did or not. Ah, okay, childhood memories. <laughs> How fun. Okay, I'm going to check out what's recommended in my pocket, just to see. Ooh, brain surgery in 3D. No, thank you. Don't be operating on my brain. I don't want you disturbing my cobwebs. I like them where they are. Um, what was it? Someone was talking. I saw something the other day. Someone was talking about brainwashing, and I said, <laughs> "Nope, ain't brainwashing me. My brain. I, I have a dirty mind for a reason." 
Okay, how to have a good debate in a meeting. Mm, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, oh, here we go. We'll check this one out just real fast. It's also, it's a recommendation from Pocket. It's from Inc.com. How to spend five minutes in the morning to supercharge your whole day. Really? How long is it going to take me to read this? Uh, number one, writing. Many people think of writing as something teachers or work forces them to do, but there's a huge pile of science showing that taking a few moments to write out your thoughts is a phenomenal way to boost your mental health. Yeah? Write down your dreams, although I, I very rarely. Um, what? What's that, cowboy? Busy surfing? <laughs> You would blurt out something you shouldn't. Uh, yeah, no, I don't know about that, cowboy. <laughs> oh, well. In any case, this recommends that you use a little five-minute journal every morning. It will help you feel positive and happier when you use it. Ah, really? Hmm. Number two, meditation. It might sound like a difficult undertaking, but... Um, only tackled by monks or tech executives with Herculean levels of self-control. But, yeah, meditation. And you know what? Uh, for those of you that are really regular, you know, and you you have your three S's, shit, shower, and shave, you know, while you're on the throne, just meditate. <laughs> Why not? I mean, it's not like you're really do you're doing something strenuous, but it's not like it takes a whole hell of a lot of mental uh, focus to accomplish that job. So, meditate while you're in there. Kill two birds with one stone. Sometimes, quite literally. Number three, exercise. Much like meditation, the science case or scientific case for the benefits of exercise is open and shut. Yes, you should exercise. Um, not necessarily really, really strenuous, but yes, exercise, stretch, get your, get your body limbered up, get you woke up. Even if it's just walking in to get the coffee perkin and maybe go outside with the doggies or if you don't have doggies, I don't know. But yes, I do a little bit. I don't do a lot of exercise in the morning, but I do kind of do a stretchy and all that fun stuff. So yeah, I agree with that one. Um... What? That was only three. Did it say only three? Oh, how to spend five minutes in the morning to supercharge. Well, see, there you go. Write in your journal, meditate, and exercise. See? Very simple things to do. So say I. I can't do the whole I have spoken thing because that's flashes. And I don't do it nearly as well as he does. What's that? 4.1% unemployment. That unemployment rate, that's people that are applying for unemployment. That's not necessarily how many are really unemployed. There's a lot of people out there that just flat ass quit looking. And there's also an awful lot of people that have um, voluntarily stepped away from the whole employment scenario thing. I wonder if those numbers are figured in there, too. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Freaker Friday. I have been bouncing all over God's green earth. Holy to Myrtle Troids. <laughs> oh, well. Be sure to stick around, because Grimner and Moose Girl will be on later this evening here on the RLM with the Freaker's Ball. Tomorrow morning for me, 11 o'clock my time, noon Eastern time, will be the Dork Table with yours truly and Flash Dork, Flash a Rooney Head, Flash Nasty, whatever he goes by. God only knows. He's got a million names. One to go with each personality, I think. And then, uh, I don't know what's going on tomorrow afternoon, if anything. I'm sure JJ's is probably going to be popping on on uh, webcom.co.uk with some tunage. Go check out JJ's if he's not playing over here on the RLM. Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner will be kicking off with the blues here on RLM. And probably going to be a rousing game of trivia in the RLM chats. Come on over and check that out. It's always a lot of fun. Although I rarely get any questions to where it's 
Graham's got it because number one, I'm a slow typist. Number two, I have stutter fingers, so slow and twist and yeah, it doesn't work out. Number three, I don't spell for shit. And then punctuation. And it, it, yeah, punctuation. We don't need no stinking punctuation. In any case, it is fun, even though I'm wrong most of the time. Eh, I've gotten used to it. Then, directly following Grimner in the RLM will be Hal Anthony, who's going to take yo ass behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop ass. Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Gary Ellen Gigi's Boo will be joining us for The Road Less Traveled. Always fun and interesting. Love those two. And then I will be back for the Rocket Chair on Wednesday for the Wackadoodle Wednesday edition. But until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. I'm going to kick back. Well, actually, first I'm going to get something to eat. No, actually, first I'm going to let my doggies out. Then I'm going to start something to eat. Then I'm going to kick back and max relax for the weekend because I don't have to go anywhere. Booyah! Bonus round. I will be baking banana bread tomorrow, though. So if you smell the lovely aroma, <laughs> it's me. You're welcome. I'm not sharing. Oh, well. Y'all have an awesome evening, and I will catch up with you in the funny